So I need some heat in my shed. It's 30 foot by 20 foot by 12 foot high and it's cold. And I'm gonna show you how I heat it for free. So I've got a bit of a deal on this pipe. It's six inches in diameter, it's 14 feet long, and it's in two pieces. There's a joint there, a very tight joint. It's galvanized pipe, saw it down the local scrapyard, and got it for, I don't know, maybe 30 euro or something like that. So I cut a hole in the roof, and I put it in in place of the old flue. So this is a really terrific flue, and um, I've connected on some stainless steel flue here to it so I could adapt it down and use ordinary, you know, flue fittings. So I've got an elbow, stainless steel elbow, on the bottom of it, and I'm going to connect it with this waste oil burning stove. I made this one a few years ago. Uh, it was in for a couple of years, worked really, really well. Uh, I've been busy. I haven't got to use it during the, the winter at all, really, but it's cold now. I want to get back in the shed. So I'm going to put this back in service. I'll give you a look at how it all goes together, and uh, you can get to see, if you haven't seen it before, you get to see how it works and, you know, what makes it work. It's very, very simple, and it makes an absolute shed load of heat, literally. <laughs> Here we go. So my stove is disassembled. I have to put it back together. I'm going to do that in a couple of minutes, but I'm just going to show you how it works. So in here, this is just a propane tank that I welded into the bottom or into the side of, um, of this standard, you know, oil drum. Um, I welded on these cheek parts on the sides and they're hollow. So the gases that come up into this space hit a plate that's there and travel up inside these cheek pieces. Then those hot gases travel along this six inch pipe and into a branch that I put on and then out the side and up the flue. Now the reason for all of that is that I hang on to the heat as long as possible. That, you know, that I'm making the, the, the flue gases travel across as much uh, surface area as I possibly can, you know, in a small space, you know, confined space inside an oil drum. So that's why I did all that work. And as it turns out, it works out absolutely brilliantly. So this is six inch flue, goes all the way through to the roof. It's 14 feet long from here, all the way to the top of it. And, um, you know, I've got some stainless steel pipe now. It, I made an adapter. This piece is an, is an adapter I made so that I could put ordinary stainless steel pipes on. There's a million different ways of doing this. I could have cut a 45 on this and just had that pipe coming out, but I had some of this already, so it was easy enough to do. So anyway, here we go. I'm gonna put it back together again. So how this works is I have an oil burner, waste oil burner, and I'll show you that in a second. I have that down inside of here. The flames come up. After I make the flames with the waste oil burner, they come up and they, you know, they, they lap the inside surface of all of that space. All of this metal gets red hot and uh, even the pipe is single wall fluid and the idea of that is that you know whatever heat is in the flueway going up the chimney some of that at least will radiate into the space as well and as it turns out it works brilliantly this is only single wall stuff you know it's only tin it's only single wall and it radiates heat like nobody's business you know you can't keep heat in this shed so the only way to kind of sort that out is to overcome the heat loss by making more heat than I lose, you know, or quicker than I'm losing the heat, I'm making it. So uh, that's it. You, this is six inch pipe. These flue rays are hollow and they allow the gases, if my arm was flexible enough, I could get it up inside here and out here. This goes all the way through here into these pieces and down in there. So it's very easy. So what I've got now is I've got a plate, a steel plate that I had on here and I cooked a breakfast on it one stage a couple of years ago, and that video is up on YouTube. In fact, the whole build is up on YouTube as well. But uh, I'm just gonna put this back together uh, for heat now, and I'm, I do intend to make a new stove. Uh, I have a design in mind. Um, yeah, it's, it's different to this anyway. It's gonna look different, and it's gonna be better, improved, you know? Uh, fuel efficiency on these things is two to three liters an hour generally. You can open it wide bore, but if, um, if you do that, say you're burning a gallon an hour, it'll make smoke. On two to three liters an hour, which is like, you know, two and a half gallons, an, or two, about half a gallon an hour. Uh, in metric and imperial gallons, this is where it gets a bit messy, there's 4.54 liters in an imperial gallon. In a US gallon, it's less, it's three points seven or something but in any case right two to three liters an hour and uh, at that I'm making no smoke but I can redden this thing and I can heat this whole space so here we go now this is the plate that stops the you know stops us seeing the, the flames and all of that but it actually seals it and compartmentalizes the whole thing so it's three mil plate 
Uh, I sized it to sit on top of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some fiberglass rope all the way around the edges and literally just bolt this down onto that. Couldn't be simpler. Now I have a few meters of this fiberglass rope, so I'm going to use maybe one, I don't know, maybe two and a half meters or something like that. So anyway, I'm just going to set it up inside and chop off what I don't need. So on the other camera, you can see that I've got fiberglass rope in there. The idea now is I'm using that as a seal. I'm going to, um, it's going to get sandwiched between the top layer, the plate, and the angle iron that I welded in there. Uh, and that's going to give me a nice tight, airtight seal, so that whatever I burn in the bottom part of it, of the stove, will burn. Gas is getting into this space, but will travel through without coming out into the room here. So I won't actually have any, um, any fumes or smoke or any of that inside my space. So here we go, look. This is the plate that I cut, and just have to be a bit careful that I don't push the rope out of position. So just gonna grab that from the back. And that's it. I'm actually looking forward to getting a bit of heat out here. It's been freezing cold for, for months. Every time I come out, I think, oh yeah, I better get this going. And guess what I don't do? I don't do it, <laughs> the usual. That's one in. These were drilled before, so if I find the same holes. There we go. All right, that's it, the plate is on. Now, to get the stove connected, I literally just, I've already set this up. But I literally just have to push that in here, just realign it, and then adjust the levels and so on. But anyway, to hook then the, uh, the oil burner up, that's just one pipe. I'll show you how I do that now, it's very easy. Now this is just the stove part of this particular procedure. The oil burner is actually easy, I have that made, and I'll show you that in a second. So that's it, it's in, hopefully you saw that. I'm just gonna put a wipe of um, fire cement around the edges, you know, just to make it as airtight as possible. But it's pretty tight. If I was to light paper in the bottom of this now, all of the smoke would go up that chimney. That's the plan. So I'm gonna give you a look at the waste all the burner end of it. Very easy. So in previous videos, I showed you how I did this. This is a half inch gate valve with a slight modification in it. I just put a little notch in one side of the gate and, um, and it, helps me control the, the, the flow. You know, someone suggested that to me in a previous video, and a great suggestion. So, anyway, this is my uh, supply, my reservoir of oil. Waste oil up to here, maybe you can see the level. Uh, this one is the feed that I take out of it, and this one here is a drain off, you know, so if there's any water in the mix, it'll fall to the bottom and I can drain it out. You know, so I'm never actually letting water go into it, because that gets quite dangerous, it makes, um, well, I'll show you in another video. In here where my hand is, is the feed pipe. And what happens is that oil drops inside that chamber and we burn it. So, so that's it. That's as long as it takes to get the, the burner in. So here we go. To put in a waste oil burner, this thing, into the stove is literally no more than that. And then I line it up so that it's under the drip tube. And that's it. Now, if I drop oil into that now, which I haven't done, this is brand new. I know the stove is old, but the, uh, the flue pipe is, is all new. The connections are all new. The fiberglass rope is all new. So we haven't lit this, you know, as it exists at the moment. It hasn't been lit. But it's a fantastic setup, and it's so, um, you know, so easy to get going again. This thing was out in the garden for a year, you know, since winter last year. Uh, the burner hasn't been used since then either. So I'm just going to drip some oil into that and light it and we'll see if it works. Now, let's just get this going.
Now you can hear the roar of that there. Some of the kerosene I squirted in came down through the holes and it's in the bottom. That's part of the design. Okay, so you just have to wait a few minutes then for it to go red hot. Oh, we're getting hotter now. So you can see in the bottom of this, I have a, you know, there's a bit of fire going on. <laughs> That's because I had too much oil going in, you know, and I drowned out the fire. But the top plate is getting red hot now, and the heat in here is pretty severe. Okay, so look, I'm talking to you on camera now. Look, you can see the fire going. And look, there's no smoke. Okay, so that's the situation. You know, you can see it live. There's no messing around with the smoke, smoke or any of that. It's working really well. Okay, so look, there you go. You see, that's 545 degrees centigrade. That's really hot. Um, and that's on the surface of that thing. So look, let me show you around the side here. Can you, let's see. Yeah, you can see that, look. 685 degrees centigrade. That's it now, the shed is getting nice and warm. So if you like the video, please thumbs up, subscribe down here if you haven't already subscribed. If you've subscribed before, thanks very much, you're absolute legends. <laughs> the numbers are growing and that's because of you. Thanks very much. So look, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.